Hey friends, welcome to Volt China. Have you ever wondered if the plug-in hybrid system in your car is hiding a war of engineering philosophies that spans the Pacific Ocean? On one side is the pioneer from the United States, the Chevrolet Volt. It's like a quiet city gentleman that used a small engine to silently change the world. On the other side is the disruptor from China, the BYD DMI. It's like an all-powerful hexagonal warrior that stormed the global market with an exceptionally strong heart. The core question is, why does the BYD DMI, this next wave, use an engine that is so much more powerful than theoretically necessary, especially when compared to its predecessor, the Volt? Is this a case of over-engineering, or is it strategic foresight? Today's video is going to be a very special one, because just a few days ago, we received a comment. This wasn't just any comment. It was from a 91-year-old engineer with 50 years of experience who personally owned three Chevrolet Volts. He presented us with a profound engineering challenge. He raised a brilliant question that strikes at the very core of modern hybrid technology. Why do plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, like those from BYD, need such high-power gasoline engines? Based on his experience, he judged that a small, ultra-high efficiency engine, serving only as a generator, should be sufficient. And he's right. So, are modern hybrid systems, like the DMI, being over-engineered? In this video, we will dive deep into the soul of these two technological paths and unveil the starkly different car-making philosophies of Chevrolet's optimization for the usual and BYD's all-scenario readiness. Trust me. This isn't just a story about engines. It's about the ultimate choice in the future of driving. Are you ready? Let's get started. To understand this showdown, we must first pay tribute to the pioneer, the Chevrolet Volt. In an era when electric cars were still seen as toys of the future, the Volt, launched by General Motors, arguably taught a lesson to the entire industry. It used a technology called EREV which stands for Extended Range Electric Vehicle. What can you compare it to? Think of it as a pure electric car that never runs out of power. Its core logic is exceptionally pure. In 99% of situations, the Volt insists on being driven by electricity. Its 1.5-liter naturally aspirated engine is like an onboard power bank. Its sole job is to generate electricity, not to drive the wheels directly. It's like a hero behind the scenes, silently converting gasoline into electrical energy and then handing it over to the electric motor to complete the task of propulsion. This is the embodiment of the optimization for the usual philosophy. The engineers at General Motors made a very clever judgment. What is the daily driving scenario for the vast majority of people? It's the urban commute. The second generation Volt had a pure electric range of about 85 kilometers which was enough to cover the daily commute for most office workers in the United States, Europe, and China. In this usual scenario, the Volt's performance was nothing short of perfect. First, an ultimate pure electric driving experience. Because it is always driven by the motor, what you get is the same quiet, smooth, and instantly responsive torque as a pure electric car. There is no engine noise and vibration, and no shifting shock from a gearbox. Second, highly optimized energy efficiency. Because the engine doesn't directly drive the wheels, engineers could make it work perpetually in its most comfortable and most fuel-efficient sweet spot to generate electricity. It's like an experienced long-distance runner who always maintains the optimal heart rate. According to data, the thermal efficiency of the second-generation Volt's engine could reach about 36.5%, which was a very impressive achievement at the time. Therefore, the Volt was hailed as the optimal solution for urban commuting. It precisely solved the user's core pain point, enjoying the pleasure of pure electric driving and low electricity costs, while completely eliminating range anxiety. However, once you take this city gentleman out of his familiar comfort zone, the situation becomes more complex. When you're cruising continuously on the highway and the battery is depleted, problems arise. This engine, responsible only for generating electricity, must first convert the chemical energy of the fuel into electrical energy. 
and then the electrical energy is converted by the motor into mechanical energy to drive the wheels. This secondary conversion process inevitably leads to energy loss. It's like you could have pushed a cart directly with your hands, but instead, you insist on first generating electricity with your hands and then using an electric motor to turn the wheels. The efficiency is naturally compromised. Consequently, the Volt's fuel consumption performance during high-speed cruising is not as good as some traditional hybrid models. At the same time, due to the relatively limited battery capacity and the power of the onboard power bank, the Volt's power performance can be somewhat restricted under continuous high loads, such as climbing a long hill with a full car. Its design philosophy determined its fate. It is a specialist, an unparalleled expert in urban commuting, but not an all-rounder that can adapt to all scenarios. Now, let's turn our attention to the other side of the Pacific and see how BYD uses a completely different philosophy to answer this hybrid puzzle. This is BYD's DMI, which stands for Dual Mode Intelligent System. If the Volt is a purist of electric drive, then the DMI is a pragmatic master of all trades. It tells us, only children make choices, adults want it all. The core of the DMI system is a sophisticated structure called the EHS, or Electric Hybrid System. It cleverly integrates the Volt's Series Mode, the Range Extender Mode, with the Parallel Slash Direct Drive Mode of traditional hybrids. This gives the DMI as many operating modes as a Swiss Army knife. 1. In the city, with sufficient battery. It is a pure electric vehicle. The engine is completely dormant, making it quiet and economical. This is the same as the Volt. 2. In the city, with low battery. It automatically switches to the same series mode as the Volt. The engine starts up, becoming an efficient generator to supply power to the motor, providing a smooth driving experience. 3. And here comes the crucial part. During high-speed cruising. This is precisely the Volt's weak spot. The DMI's clutch engages, allowing that incredibly high thermal efficiency engine to bypass the generator and motor and drive the wheels directly. This is the engine direct drive mode. This mode perfectly solves the efficiency problem of range extender hybrids on the highway. It avoids the energy loss from secondary conversion, ensuring that every drop of fuel is converted into forward momentum as much as possible. This is why the DMI system can achieve a fuel consumption as low as around 6 liters per 100 kilometers on the highway, even with a depleted battery. When maximum power is needed, like during hard acceleration or climbing a hill, the DMI will activate parallel mode. At this point, the engine and the electric motor are like two soldiers fighting side by side, simultaneously delivering power to the wheels and unleashing immense torque and power in an instant. Now, we can answer the question from the beginning. Why does the BYD, DMI, need a more powerful engine? Because in the DMI's philosophy, the engine is no longer just a power bank. It is a core component that wears multiple hats. It must not only generate electricity efficiently in series mode, but more importantly, in direct drive and parallel modes, it must have enough confidence and strength to directly propel this two-ton-plus vehicle at high speeds, or provide a continuous stream of power on mountain roads. If the engine's power is too small, then during high-speed direct drive, you would face the dilemma of a small horse pulling a large cart. Not only would it struggle to get up to speed, but the engine would also be screaming, which would actually consume more fuel. So BYD equipped the DMI with a powerful heart, an engine with a thermal efficiency as high as 46.06%. This wasn't because it was over-engineered, but because its all-scenario readiness philosophy demanded it. It had to ensure that the vehicle could operate in its most efficient and most composed state under any scenario, whether in the city, on the highway, or in the mountains. All right, both contenders have entered the ring. Now, let's have a head-to-head -head showdown between these two technological philosophies across several key dimensions. Urban conditions. A draw, or perhaps a slight edge to the Volt. Within their pure electric range, both have zero fuel consumption. 
In low battery urban conditions, both use series mode, so the efficiency gap is small. The second gen Volt's urban fuel consumption was about 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers, while the fifth gen DMI is even lower, with some models achieving 3.9 liters. This is mainly due to the DMI's newer, higher thermal efficiency engine. Highway conditions. DMI wins, hands down. As we analyzed earlier, the Volt's secondary conversion is its inherent weakness, leading to a significant increase in highway fuel consumption. The DMI's engine direct drive mode, on the other hand, is born for the highway, delivering far superior fuel economy compared to the Volt. Overall efficiency, DMI is the winner. Thanks to its all scenario adaptability, the DMI demonstrates better overall fuel economy in mixed road conditions. For example, the Tang DMI's combined full fuel, full charge range can easily exceed 1,000 kilometers. And models equipped with the latest generation DM technology, like the Chin L, have pushed this number to an astonishing 2,100 kilometers, a feat the Volt could hardly match. This round has almost no suspense. The Volt's combined power is about 111 kilowatts, with a peak torque of around 398 newton meters. Its power output is geared more towards being adequate for daily use. The BYD DMI, on the other hand, taking the 2025 Tang DMI as an example, has a combined system power of up to 315 kilowatts and a peak torque of 540 newton meters. Its 0 to 100 acceleration is just 7.5 seconds and the Han DMI can do it in 6.9 seconds. This level of performance already surpasses many traditional gasoline cars. This is a direct reflection of the all-scenario readiness philosophy. It must be not only efficient, but also powerful. This is a very interesting topic, in terms of ANZA system complexity. The Volt's range extender system is simpler. It lacks a complex clutch or transmission mechanism which theoretically means fewer potential points of failure. The DMI's series parallel structure is more complex and places higher demands on its control strategy. However, in terms of engine usage frequency, the situation is the exact opposite. In urban commuting, the Volt's engine might not start for years, which can lead to a problem known as cold start wear. It's like a person who hasn't exercised for a long time and then suddenly engages in strenuous activity, they're more likely to get injured. Although the Volt has a protective mechanism to periodically start the engine, this remains a potential concern. The DMI's engine, however, is used more frequently due to its involvement in direct drive, constantly keeping it in a warmed-up state, which actually helps maintain good working condition. BYD has also developed technologies like pre-lubrication and rapid warm-up to minimize the wear and tear from cold starts. The conclusion is, both have their trade-offs in reliability, and both have been proven by the market over the long term. The Volt's strength is its structural simplicity, while the DMI compensates for its structural complexity with a more intelligent control strategy. Theoretically, the Volt's simpler system should have a lower manufacturing cost. However, the final market price tells a different story. The second-generation Volt started at around 35,000 US dollars, positioning it in the mid to high end at the time. BYD, on the other hand, leveraging its formidable vertical integration capability, producing almost all core components in-house, from batteries, motors, and electronic controls, to the engine, and its massive economies of scale, has managed to control costs to an extreme. Take the 2025 Chin L, DMI for example. Its starting price is just 99,800 Chinese yuan. This is almost the same price as a joint venture brand gasoline car in the same class. In cost control and market pricing, BYD has demonstrated its immense power as the world's largest new energy vehicle manufacturer. Through this four-dimensional comparison, we can clearly see that this is not just about the differences between two cars or two technologies. It's a clash between two fundamentally different design philosophies and market insights. Chevrolet Volt's optimization for the usual philosophy was essentially designed for multi-car families and mature automotive markets. Its user profile is crystal clear. An urban commuter 
who likely also has an SUV or an MPV at home for long-distance travel. The Volt is their second car, perfectly solving 90% of their daily commuting needs, while offering ultimate tranquility and eco-friendliness. It doesn't need to be a jack-of-all-trades, it just needs to be the master of its own domain. It's a precise, elegant, and focused solution. Meanwhile, BYD's all-scenario readiness philosophy is deeply rooted in the practical needs of the Chinese market and attempts to fulfill every fantasy of the one-car family. In China, for a long time, many families will only own a single car. This car must be a master of all. It has to handle the Monday to Friday urban commute, offering the economy and smoothness of an EV. It must be capable of taking the family on weekend trips to the countryside, providing enough power and space. And it must also handle the demands of long-distance holiday travel, without any range anxiety. Therefore, the design goal of the DMI is to cover 100% of driving scenarios. It is willing to accept higher system complexity and cost in exchange for providing uncompromising performance and efficiency in any situation. It is an ambitious, comprehensive, and supremely pragmatic solution. There is no absolute right or wrong here, only what is suitable. The Volt's philosophy, in the context of its time and market, was brilliant. The DMI's philosophy, however, is more in line with the user demands of the current largest and also most competitive global market, China. So, where is this battle of philosophies headed in the future? The answer is intelligence and fusion. The 91 year old engineer, Mr. Volt, mentioned a very critical technological trend GPS, intelligent energy management. Whether it's the Volt's range extender or the DMI's series parallel system, future hybrid systems will become much smarter. They will act like a seasoned driver, using GPS navigation to know in advance whether you're about to go uphill, downhill, or enter a congested urban area. Then, it will proactively and intelligently plan the energy distribution. For example, storing more electricity before a climb, or preserving battery power to enable pure electric driving upon entering a city. This technology will further blur the efficiency boundaries between different technical routes, making every hybrid car more efficient and intelligent. Brands like Geely, Link and Co. and Avatar are all exploring deeply in this direction. At the same time, we may see a fusion of technological paths. Future hybrid systems might combine the smoothness of range extenders with the high-speed efficiency of series parallel systems, creating an even more perfect solution. Range extender technology is also constantly evolving, using more efficient engines and larger batteries to compensate for its high-speed shortcomings. So, returning to our original question. The Chevrolet Volt, the master of optimizing for the usual, with its focus and purity, ushered in the era of plug-in hybrids, and the BYD, DMI, the great synthesizer of all scenario readiness, with its comprehensiveness and power, has pushed this technological revolution to new heights. The evolution of these two engineering philosophies is the most spectacular epitome of the global auto industry's electrification transformation over the past decade. So, the question is for you, watching the screen. Which technological philosophy do you admire more? The specialist that perfects the solution for 90% of daily needs or the all-rounder that prepares for 100% of all possibilities? Please share your views and your choice in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. And by the way, if you have a particularly burning question you'd like me to answer, you can go to the community tab on my channel page, find the post related to the Volt China data desk, and leave your question in the comments. I personally select top questions every week and provide detailed answers. I look forward to meeting you there. If you enjoyed this deep dive video, please don't forget to like, subscribe to our channel, Volt China, and turn on the notification bell. We will bring you more hardcore content about technological innovation in China, especially in the new energy vehicle sector. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.